String theory is a physics theory that the universe is composed of vibrating filaments of energy, expressed in precise mathematical language. These strings of energy represent the most fundamental aspect of nature. The theory also predicts other fundamental objects, called brains. All of the matter in our universe consists of the vibrations of these strings and brains. One important result of string theory is that gravity is a natural consequence of the theory, which is why scientists believe that string theory may hold the answer to possibly uniting gravity with the other forces that affect matter. String theory is a mathematical theory. It's based on mathematical equations that can be interpreted in certain ways. If you've never studied physics before, this may seem odd, but all physical theories are expressed in the language of mathematics. At present, no one knows exactly what the final version of string theory will look like. Scientists have some vague notions about the general elements that will exist within the theory, but no one has come up with a final equation that represents all of string theory in our universe, and experiments haven't yet been able to confirm it, though they haven't successfully refuted it, either. Physicists have created simplified versions of the equation, but it doesn't quite describe our universe. Yet. String theory is a type of high-energy theoretical physics, practiced largely by particle physicists. It's a quantum field theory that describes the particles and forces in our universe based on the way that special extra dimensions within the theory are wrapped up into a very small size, a process called compactification. This is the power of string theory, to use the fundamental strings, and the way extra dimensions are compactified, to provide a geometric description of all the particles and forces known to modern physics. Among the forces needed to be described is, of course, gravity. Because string theory is a quantum field theory, this means that string theory would be a quantum theory of gravity, known as quantum gravity. The established theory of gravity, general relativity, has a fluid, dynamic spacetime, and one aspect of string theory that's still being worked on is getting this sort of a spacetime to emerge out of the theory. What is quantum field theory? Physicists use fields to describe the things that don't just have a particular position, but exist at every point in space. For example, you can think about the temperature in a room as a field, it may be different near an open window than near a hot stove, and you could imagine measuring the temperature at every single point in the room. A field theory, then, is a set of rules that tell you how some field will behave, such as how the temperature in the room changes over time. In the mid-1990s, string theory was updated to become a more complex theory, called M-theory, which contains more objects than just strings. These new objects were called brains, and they could have anywhere from zero to nine dimensions. The earlier string theories, which now also include brains, were seen as approximations of the more complete M-theory. Five key ideas are at the heart of string theory and come up again and again. It's best for you to become familiar with these key concepts right off the bat. String theory predicts that all objects in our universe are composed of vibrating filaments and membranes of energy. String theory attempts to reconcile general relativity, gravity, with quantum physics. String theory predicts a new connection, called supersymmetry, between two fundamentally different types of particles, bosons and fermions. String theory predicts a number of extra, usually unobservable, dimensions to the universe. Strings and brains. When the theory was originally developed in the 1970s, the filaments of energy in string theory were considered to be one-dimensional objects, strings. One-dimensional indicates that a string has only one dimension, length, as opposed to say a square, which has both length and height dimensions. These strings came in two forms, closed strings and open strings. An open string has ends that don't touch each other, while a closed string is a loop with no open end. It was eventually found that these early strings, called type I strings, could go through five basic types of interactions. The interactions are based on a string's ability to have ends join and split apart. Because the ends of open strings can join together to form closed strings, you can't construct a string theory without closed strings. This proved to be important, because the closed strings have properties that make physicists believe they might describe gravity. In other words, instead of just being a theory of matter particles, physicists began to realize that string theory may just be able to explain gravity and the behavior of particles. Over the years, it was discovered that the theory required objects other than just strings. These objects can be seen as sheets or brains. Strings can attach at one or both ends to these brains. A two-dimensional brain called a two-brain. Modern physics has two basic scientific laws, 
quantum physics and general relativity. These two scientific laws represent radically different fields of study. Quantum physics studies the very smallest objects in nature, while relativity tends to study nature on the scale of planets, galaxies, and the universe as a whole. Obviously, gravity affects small particles too, and relativity accounts for this as well. Theories that attempt to unify the two theories are theories of quantum gravity, and the most promising of all such theories today is string theory. The closed strings of string theory correspond to the behavior expected for gravity. Specifically, they have properties that match the long sought after graviton, a particle that would carry the force of gravity between objects. Hand in hand with the question of quantum gravity, string theory attempts to unify the four forces in the universe, electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, and gravity, together into one unified theory. In our universe, these fundamental forces appear as four different phenomena, but string theorists believe that in the early universe, when there were incredibly high energy levels, these forces are all described by strings interacting with each other. All particles in the universe can be divided into two types, bosons and fermions. String theory predicts that a type of connection, called supersymmetry, exists between these two particle types. Under supersymmetry, a fermion must exist for every boson and a boson for every fermion. Unfortunately, experiments have not yet detected these extra particles. Supersymmetry is a specific mathematical relationship between certain elements of physics equations. It was discovered outside of string theory, although its incorporation into string theory transformed the theory into supersymmetric string theory, or superstring theory, in the mid-1970s. One benefit of supersymmetry is that it vastly simplifies string theory's equations by allowing certain terms to cancel out. Without supersymmetry, the equations result in physical inconsistencies, such as infinite values and imaginary energy levels. Because scientists haven't observed the particles predicted by supersymmetry, this is still a theoretical assumption. Many physicists believe that the reason no one has observed the particles is because it takes a lot of energy to generate them. They may have existed in the early universe, but as the universe cooled off and energy spread out after the Big Bang, these particles would have collapsed into the lower energy states that we observe today. In other words, the strings vibrating as higher energy particles lost energy and transformed from one type of particle, one type of vibration, into another, lower energy type of vibration. Scientists hope that astronomical observations or experiments with particle accelerators will uncover some of these higher energy supersymmetric particles, providing support for this prediction of string theory.